Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the Tower Hobbies Uproar V2, and I've got a fantastic story about this plane. You're not going to want to miss it. Come back after the break and we'll get into it. All right, before I get into the plane, I just wanted to pop this up in front of you one last time to show you that I did have a beauty cover for the discharger, so that goes on there. I've got the fan covers on, the fan covers on the back, so this is 100% complete and functional, and I even attached a little balance lead adapter so I could minimize the amount of time I spend connecting batteries to the discharge balance leads on the uh, low voltage alarm. So, that's the discharger. It's 100% done. Works great. And there's, I'll put a video link in so you can, if you don't know about this, you can go check out how I did this. But pretty cool little device. I even put some rubber feet on the bottom so I don't scratch up my desk when I'm using it. Okay, the Tower Hobbies Uproar V2. This is a V2 plane because the original was a gas only and it was a kit. I know that because this was my very first RC plane. So here's the great story about this plane. When I decided I wanted to get into RC flying, I lived in Illinois and I went to a hobby shop and I bought a radio, a motor, uh, the servos, <laughs> and the airplane. And everything back then was balsa, balsa kits. There was no such thing as EPO foam or it wasn't used in modeling at that time. When I bought the plane, the reason I picked it was when I looked at the design, I thought that looks easy enough to build. It doesn't look like it's very complex compared to some of the other things that I, that I looked at. <laughs> so anyway, I bought the plane, I took it home, I took over my dining room table because I lived in an apartment back then. I built the thing up, tuned the motor on our balcony uh, on, on the eighth floor of a apartment building in Chicago. Once I got done with the plane, my uncle was visiting and we talked about it and decided, let's go try it. Let's go try and fly the plane. So we brought it to the park. My wife was with us. We went to the park. I got it started, did all my control checks, made sure everything was working, and I took off. And it took off. I got it off the ground. I managed to get a real shaky fly out. I made a 180 degree turn. I came right back at my own face, cleared, our, cleared my head, my uncle's head, my wife's head, went right over our heads and into the dirt and turned this thing into a pile of toothpicks. That plane lasted all in all maybe 18 seconds in the air before I totally destroyed it. When I saw this, I'd been watching it and watching it and thinking, nah, I don't fly 3D, it's not my style, not my thing. But I finally decided, because of everything that's going on with Horizon and Tower, I thought I might want to just go ahead and grab it. I'll probably regret it if I don't, because this can be a fun little fun fly airplane too. So if I don't grab it, it'll be my luck that you run it out of production and I'll never see it again. So I decided what the heck and I, I got a hold of one. So as I mentioned before, they had to convert this for electric use. And one of the things they did to do that was they put this big bay in the bottom. And I've, I've already seen the articles and I want to point something out. If you're building an electric plane and you see these holes like this, you probably need to cut that film out because more often, that, more often than not, that's designed for airflow. And if you don't want to do these, that's fine. You could cut something out in the back, but you have to let air in and you have to let air out. So if you see holes like this on, a, on an ARF, especially one that has a history of being a gas plane, you should think about opening them up to let the plane breathe. You also need to think about how to do that up front too, and it's pretty solid up front. So I'll be looking at this and figuring out where I'm going to open it, but maybe just in the, maybe just in the firewall. But I am going to open this up up front because you got to let that air in. You got to let air in so the electronics inside can breathe. Anyway, on the fuselage, very simple. It's a framed build. It's not sheeted. Um, so it's frames all the way down with balsa formers and balsa side panels. And these are empty. So you can see, I don't know if the camera is going to pick up on that. Yeah, you can see that. So you can see that they're open gaps all the way back that helps keep the weight down. A very simple build. It's a lot like a, a stick. You know, this is a lot like a stick build. And one thing that I'm going to say that I totally approve of, maybe Tower's watching my videos. I don't know. But I complain all the time how they drill out these holes and when they do that, they make it, they, they drill them out so they fit proprietary motors. And when they do that, we end up having to fill them back in and redrill them. This time, check that out, man. They finally left the holes undrilled. I totally approve of that. 
So now I can put my motor mount on there and I can get it to fit without having to do any extra surgery. So I'm really thrilled about that. Good on you, Tower. Good job. That's awesome that they did that. As far as the construction goes, I'll pull the bottom panel off and the top, top panel is already off. That's where the battery goes. So a nice big battery tray, Velcro strap will go there, loops. There's uh, little side tabs here for the loops, they'll go there. Uh, but yeah, everything looks fine. There's, it's, it's, it feels very solid, feels very square. You know, as I, as I look at it, everything looks like it's very true and square. I don't see any construction issues on the onset from the outside at this point on the fuselage. Everything looks good. The fuselage, the uh, control tubes or the uh, push rod guide tubes, a little bit of flex in there for movement, but they don't move fore and aft, and that's the key. So what I'm doing is they do move a little bit left and right, which is okay. When the servo arm is moving, it keeps the tension off the arm, so that's okay. What you don't want is fore and aft. That's bad. So no fore and aft movement on those. They feel really good. And even the left and right is constrained. There's a little bit of movement, but not far enough to cause issues with centering or precision on the servo position. So everything looks good there. And then these, I think, are the wing locking tabs. So when you put the wing in, that come, there's a locking tab that comes in here, and that hex head bolts down and holds that wing in place. Everything looks great on the fuselage, no complaints there, except for the fact that I'll have to open it up for airflow. That's the only beef that I had. All right, the wings, these things are laughably thick. All right, so the cord on this wing looks like about 60 millimeters, six centimeters at its thickest. So it's an it's a insanely, ridiculously thick cord, which is cool. I mean, that's a lot of lift. So I, I imagine, I've seen videos of this thing flying quite slow, and, and that's why. This thing will create, definitely create a lot of lift. And that is a symmetric airfoil. So this thing definitely looks like it's going to create a lot of lift. And check that out, they use metal retaining tabs for the wing. That's cool, that's, that's durable. And they're bolted in, you can see they're, I don't know if I can get it on the camera or not, but they're bolted in right in there to the interior of the wing. So very stout looking wing, very beefy looking. All right, and here's the other wing. As far as the covering goes, I've only seen very, couple minor little bubbles, nothing, you know, nothing that would make me complain. No big deal to take those out. As you can see, the ailerons are pre-slotted and hinged, but they're not glued, so they still have to be glued in, which is no big deal. That's fine. No problem. One other thing I'll caution you about, before you poke your hole in this, in this wing, make sure you understand the top and bottom, because the bottom has a little framing around here, and I almost, I almost did it. I almost cut through that, and that's the top of the wing. So don't, don't do that. Make sure you... Make sure you find the hole on the bottom. It's got a hard plate. That's the way you tell, it's a hard plate. And the hard plate has a very small servo opening and that's it. And for that servo insert that I'm going to make, I'm gonna put those on Thingiverse and I'll talk about the servos in just a minute, but I'll put the servo adapter plate on Thingiverse and that way you'll know if you want to use a tower plane that calls for these tactic servos, you should be able to use my, my 3D inserts, okay? So I'll put that on, on Thingiverse and give you a link for that as well. Other than that, the wing looks great. I don't have any complaints at all about the wing. I know some guys get real nitpicky about how these spars meet at the formers and maybe they'd sand that a little better. And I, you know, I can kind of understand that a little bit. This maybe could be sanded just a little bit better, but it's not, it's not that big of a deal. It's not like it jumps off the, it doesn't jump off the plane to me. I'm gonna try and give you a view down the edge. It's not, it's really not that big of a deal. I mean, it, I think it looks pretty good actually. So yeah, I, I don't have any complaints about that. That's nothing, no problem. Okay, the vertical stabilizer is balsa. It's not solid, not ply, it's not sheeted. Everything's slotted and hinged, but not glued, so you have to glue it. Then the horizontal stabilizer, just a little bit of ironing, no big deal. I, 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 don't, I wouldn't penalize them for that. Everything looks good there. One thing that I'm really happy about on this plane, you guys know how I feel about torque rods. No torque rods on this. They actually use a dual elevator servo horn connection. So you have a, so they use a domino inside the fuselage with two rods coming out to meet the elevator at the control horns. I like that way better than torque rods because it's adjustable and you can get that perfectly straight. I really do approve of that. I'm happy that they took that route. 
But everything looks good on horizontal stabilizer. Nothing to talk about there. And look at these side force generators. Look at these things. Let me measure these for you too. Yeah, 170 millimeters tall at the back. So <laughs> they're pretty big. <laughs> pretty big side force generators. And those both, there's two of those. They look good. No issues there. Everything looks perfectly done. Here's the wing spar. This has to be registered as a weapon in most states. All aluminum, but very solid, very stout. So everything looks good there. I like it. I'll give you one warning about the control rods or the push rods. When I unbox mine, my aileron push rods were loose in the box. So just be aware of that. You don't want to lose these or throw them out accidentally. All right, as far as hardware goes, they give you the motor mounts for gas or nitro. Obviously, I don't care about that or those things or these things. I'm not sure what this little gizmo is all about yet, but I'm sure the directions will explain it. That I do care about. I'm not going to toss that until I know. There are the main wheels, a couple more pieces of wood. I'm not sure what they're for, but I'll hold on to those. Traditional tail wheel assembly, probably like a Dubro part, but just very common. We're used to seeing those. And then here's the hardware. Not a whole lot of hardware. I see a bunch of collets in there for wheels, control horns, the domino some quick connectors, that's about it in there. And then I purposely left this, this is the canopy. I left this covered because I wanted you to see it with me for the first time because they have this nice kind of rubberized, I don't know what this stuff is called, but it's kind of like a, it feels almost like rubber, but it's uh, frequently used on surfaces that require protection. So there's the vacuum form canopy and that looks, looks very good. I see a little, little bit of a bubble. Isn't that picking up on the camera right there? Yeah, you can see it. Right there I see it. A little bit of a bubble. Imperfection, but yeah, and there's some scratches over here. See, that's one thing that I was talking about on that Extreme Flight Vanquish. Nothing. They use that real soft tissue paper, so nothing. On this one, there are some scratches right here. I'm not sure if the camera will pick that up or not. Yeah, you see them? Right there right there. Again, it's kind of nitpicky and they tried, they made an effort, but what they're doing, it's not good enough. They, they need to use that tissue paper like uh, Extreme does on their planes. All right, there's a decal sheet and I really like what Tower's been doing with their decal schemes and their graphic schemes I like, because it looks very, it looks modern. You know, it doesn't look, it doesn't look like it's from the 70s. Not that there's anything wrong with being from the 70s. Don't get all animated on me about that. But you know what I'm saying, it's a modern look. So that looks cool. Nice color scheme and it's very reminiscent of the Tower Hobby Sport. So these two could go together uh, on, a, on a flight day and look like they're on the same flight team or something. You know what I'm saying? Pretty cool. So good looking graphic scheme, definitely approve of that. And then as far as the instruction manual goes, I think Tower probably has, they set the standard in the industry for instructions. They're very thorough, very detailed, good pictures, lots of descriptions. So Tower does do an excellent job with their instructions and this is no different. All right, this plane requires or they recommend a 32, 32 class motor with this. And if you remember when I did the big monster motor shootout, those were all 32 class motors. I've been waiting for another 32 class motor to get in from China, from Bitco. They were going to send me another Tomcat. But while I wait for that, what I'll end up doing is putting the G-Force G32 from Value Hobby on this plane. So I've got that ready to go. And I've got a 60, I've got a 60 amp Beatles ZTW ESC. And as far as the servos go, I'm using the Emax 3003 17 grams. These have as much strength as the servos required or specced in the book. So that's why I chose them. But anyway, I got the servos from Altitude Hobbies and I'm gonna give them a little plug too. If you guys haven't used Altitude Hobbies, check them out because I have to tell you the times that I've used them, they've been very prompt with their shipping and they get stuff from Colorado to Florida in a matter of like two or three days. I have to give them props. They, they do a good job and I, I, that's not, there's no sponsor or anything going on there. That, that's just me letting you guys know where I've had good success with online hobby shops. So Altitude in Fort Collins, Colorado, they're pretty good. Give them a try. That's where I get my Leopard motors. I've been getting a lot of my ESCs there and I get my, my servos there lately. All right, guys, that's all I've got on the Tower Hobbies Upper V2. I know I still owe you a build video on the FMS Pilatus PC21. However, I'm still waiting for a part from China on that plane. During the build, something was broken. I'll cover that after it's resolved. 
I know I still owe you a build video on that. It's coming. I definitely want to fly that plane, but until I get that part, I'm stuck in the water. And that part's coming from China. This one, I think I have just about everything I need to build this, so I'll probably get started on this relatively soon and probably get a build video out pretty quick. And good news, our field opens on Monday. So in a few days, I'll be able to get out to the field and maybe get some more flight footage, which is awesome. I'm looking forward to that. All right, I hope you've enjoyed the content. If you're new and haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing that. All the subscriptions for RC Video Reviews are very helpful. If you're a regular member here and you, you've been joining us for a while, keep the comments up, keep the thumbs up going, and tell your friends, share the link, you know, tell other people about the video, all that stuff helps. And I appreciate everything you guys do to help keep this channel rolling. That's all I've got for today. Hope you have a great day. Take it easy.